Hello sports fans, JDOD fans of sorted waifs and strays. I've got three of them here. Day one, SAP Influencer Summit. Thoughts? No, John, you don't get to speak. Go on. Three kittens, that's all I can say. Three kittens, okay. Little John. Well, a lot of people, yeah, I got that. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people didn't get a chance to see the stream because it was restricted, so I guess what I would say is yeah, there wasn't a lot of hard news, but there is more clarity of vision right now from SAP. So I thought Snobbe presented a nice uh, balanced keynote without a lot of HANA overdose, HANA, HANA, HANA stuff. And from that, I took away a few things that I can discuss once I pass the baton. Go on, John, your turn. Am I allowed? You are. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, I think the main thing for me is that next year is going to be a very interesting year. It's the first year that I can remember that SAP has a cohesive and reasonably sensible set of products which are in the market, they're viable, and they work. And, that, and that's going to make it a very interesting year. Okay. PJ? The two things that interested me, well, apart from you know, the lack of overdose on HANA, one is uh, the on-demand team hiring 300 or so very specific salespeople to push their products rather than trusting the existing sales force. And the second thing is Steve Lucas saying, hey, I want uh, SAP to be the number two database vendor in the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is a little bit of a strike across the bow at a company uh, you're But it depends with. who he's talking about as being the number one, of course, doesn't it? No idea. I just assume that Oracle and IBM should just close shop and walk away. Well, I, I, would, I, would, I would not disagree with you. I mean, you know. Should be scared. From my point of view, the the um, the little gem that I heard that made my ears prick up was when Schnauber turned around and said that the bulk of growth is going to come from small and middle-sized businesses because that opens up the door for the whole developer discussion that I've been personally banging a drum about for a long time. I know you guys have as well. So, I mean, that, that's my instant takeaway. So. Yeah, I think to, to add to that, um, the sense of this new SAP is really starting to grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I agree. Momentum. For the, for the first time, you feel that's getting through the organization. And I think we're seeing that in, this, in the style of messaging. The outside-in style of messaging is starting to percolate. It's not, it's not consistent. There's still broadcast. Yeah. Um, but the, the outside-in is starting to percolate through the organization. And I think... Um, and I saw that um, today when I did another video shoot, and they said, "Can you not talk about Hannah too much?" <laughs> Whereas before, I mean, it was, yeah, wow. They said we want to hear about other stuff too. There, there is also some news if you're willing to pay a little bit of attention to the PowerPoint slides, uh, in the sense that yes, SAP can't specifically talk about cloud roadmap with success factors, but the fact that career on demand no longer appears on any product listings whatsoever gives you a pretty fair sense that it's going away. And the fact that Byte is gone. gone. Yeah. But they haven't formed career on demand. Yeah. And then with Hey Byte, Jarrett, you're gonna be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> and then with by design, a lot of pundits have claimed that it's going away. It looks to me like there's still a very clear position for by design in the mid market. What the interesting thing is now SAP really seems to be pushing business one largely in a hosted variety, eventually through partners for the small business, which is interesting because there's been a lot of fuzziness around by design versus business one. Whether that distinction is going to hold up, I don't know, but it is a piece of news coming out of this they show. Do, they do need to clarify what they mean by this, by how B1 is going to be hosted, because if they're not careful, they're going to qualify for the cloud washes. Right. But, you know. Yep. On-premise yeah, in the cloud. On-premise in the cloud, yeah, yeah, that one. I asked them uh, today in a cloud breakout whether they would, okay, they have announced that till 2020 the business suite will stay, mm. but then what happens after that? As mm. it will by design become uh, so pervasive that there won't be much of a business suite left, as in all the innovations will happen on the by design side, and they actually push back saying that that wouldn't be the case, that, um, Business suite will pretty much stay, and they expect a lot of customers to be still on to uh, way into future. Will they re-engineer the business suite for the cloud? That's there, that's the big question for me. The impression I got was that there's only incremental innovation, and that everything else, as in the major innovation, should all come in the on-demand. Okay. Uh, or th at least that's how I am. Well, and a big piece of that is that SAP, I think, is very clear right now that they're going to use Hana to quote unquote renew 
the suite. So they view Hana and In Memory as a way of revitalizing the 20-year-old business suite architecture and performance. Whether that ends up being the case, I don't know, but that's how SAP is, is selling it right now, I think. I think the reality is that organizations require a system of record for certain things. Yeah, but... And, yeah. and uh, the SAP business suite is a very good system of record yeah, for yeah, that. Yeah. The SAP business suite running on HANA as a database and taking individual process problems like uh, supply chain optimization. Yeah. I know they've done that with API already, but you take these individual process problems where where performance and real-time enterprise are a right. real problem and you focus on those. And they've got like 20 teams focused on different processes yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Make, making those happen in ERP. I, I think that that's a very interesting uh, value proposition regardless of whether it's on-premise or in the cloud. I yeah. think the the storage of those systems of record is, is not that relevant right. Right, in the large enterprise. I think the um, the other thing that um, that struck me as well was that, that cash management Thing that Vishal was demonstrating. I th I, just as a side note, I thought his demos were actually not that bad. You know, and usually that SAP managed to muff them pretty badly, but they were actually he wasn't bad. Anyway. And don't the, forget his Im impromptu calling up of the Oracle. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that was oh. sweet. <laughs> that, uh, okay. But the cash management thing, I, I, I saw that, and he, he, he called that sort of some renewal of, of, the, of the suite, right? I get that, and actually I don't mind that as a, as a concept. The only problem is, is that he's trying to describe this as really novel, and yet I've seen this in the, in the SME space already. The SME developers at the low end of the, of the food chain are, are already doing this stuff. And it strikes me that if, if, if the two things. One is, you know, they can learn some lessons, I think, from real SME developers that they can't get access to today. I really yeah, think they can. But, but the novelty is in the SAP install base, right? It's not in the market in general. SAP customers will find it very novel. Yeah, yeah of course, because they haven't had it and they've never seen it. Exactly. But what what I'm getting at is is that you know if those if the true SMEs um, SME developers are, have already done this or are already doing it and 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 I know of at least four companies that are, then it struck me that there's a place for SAP as a company of developers to learn from SMEs developers if you right. get what I mean. You know, people who are not encumbered by having to work with big fuck-off systems, to put it bluntly, right? Anyway, that's my two pounds on it. Can I just ask you, Dennis, as a close follower? Look, excuse me, you look confused with that. Yeah, you look a little perplexed. You look, you look confused with that. Go I ahead. Think, I think I lost the thread a little bit. Let's, okay, let's, that's let's fine. Yeah. Yeah. All right, 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 right. Can I just ask you real quickly about Tibco and Tibber? Did you yeah. see that as a significant announcement? Oh, unbelievably, yeah. And why? Well, because A, it's a burying of, uh, of the hatchet from days gone past, um, which has been a very, very difficult thing for, for both companies. Um, and secondly, because, you know, like it or not, TIBCO does world-class integration, which competes directly with your guys. Yeah. But, but, I mean, they do world-class integration at massive scale. They really know how to do this shit. And, and so, you know, I'm really pleased to, to, to hear about that. In fact, I'm talking to them tomorrow. Okay. I know it is a guess, but do you think SAP would eventually just buy them out? <sighs> That's been a persistent rumor for a long time, and I, I don't like to contribute to those rumors, but my personal view is that they make a better fit than any other uh, potentially acquiring company. Now, from TIPCO's perspective, uh, Vivek has always wanted to be independent, wanted to maintain his independence. He's, He's proved that he could uh, he could get through the billion dollar barrier, um, which a lot of people thought that he couldn't. Highly profitable company. Why would he sell, right? You know, when you can work alongside SAP um, and gain additional revenue, there's there's no real incentive mm -hmm. at this moment in time. But you know, the no, incentive was more from SAP's point of view in my mind. I think, yeah, I think you know, I, I mean, SAP um, has to make big acquisitions. You know, there's no point in it, in it playing around with it. A 100 million or a 200 million dollar deal and calling it a big, a, a, a decent deal. It has to be a, a big deal these days. And, and Tipco, I've always felt would be a would be a good, sensible fit. But you know, I don't want to I don't yeah, want to yeah. push the boat on that one. Hey, you guys look forward to cloud deep dive day tomorrow. Yeah, I think so. Can't wait. Can't success. Going to talk success factors. Well, uh, they're not going to talk nope. success factors. Are they? So, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think what we're going to do is we're going to listen. Carry it on demand. Yeah, let's try and talk career, career on, on demand. demand. All right, that sounds okay, good. Okay, so uh, career on demand, oh, that's dead right, fine. So we won't talk about it. Success factors, no, we can't talk about that. How about that. stream work? 
Yeah. Streamworks dead as well now. No, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, uh, I've been through a kind of an emotional roller coaster over this one because we, you know, we all had this conversation about whether we would come to this conference. And of all the things, I wasn't sure what value I would get out of the cloud day. I heard about the success of Access acquisition and I thought immediately, well, fantastic. It means we're going to hear all about the cloud. And then, of course, I reflected upon that and realized that anyway, we'd be in a quiet period, so mm-hmm. we wouldn't be able to talk about it. So I, I'm sat there interested in tomorrow. I'm more interested in SA Please cloud strategy than I've ever been, but I wonder whether they can actually really put out their cloud strategy. What is going to be interesting is mm-hmm. what they don't say. Right. Okay. It's going to be your subtext day, a backstory day, a read between the lines day. Mm-hmm. What do you do? You, do you agree with that? No, no, I, I do agree. But I, I also think that they can explain quite a bit um, without touching on this satisfactory story. Yeah. That they, they mm-hmm. could explain how the general pricing would work, how the general go to market would work, uh, things like that, without really touching the sensitive part of uh, the success factors acquisition. Right? Mm-hmm. So there'll be a product roadmap which probably they cannot talk, they can probably not talk about financials, but. Uh, but they should be able to talk about some elements of product because they've got to keep some of this stuff. Whatever is public, they can obviously share. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it is going to be a very interesting day. Yeah. Are we done? I think we're good. I think we're good too.